go big or go gnome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and you've been gnomed. Today, we're playing Anim Pakal, who, in fact, creates gnome tokens, but only whenever you attack with a non-gnome creature such as an Impacol. This deck has a hybrid of putting plus one, plus one counters onto creatures, specifically an Impacol, because the more counters she has on her, the more gnomes you make when you attack. On top of that, we also have things that make additional tokens, since we're making tokens on attack, and things that get us more counters on attack. I'm, I'm specifically talking about Cathar's Crusade because it's Great. We have a couple things that give us uh, plus one, plus one counters on our creatures each turn, like Luminarch Aspirant, the backside of Invasion of Gobicon, and of course, we're just playing a lot of really good Boros attackers. This is a Boros deck, it's aggressive, and it has what I'm going to call my favorite new tech in almost every deck, Roaming Throne. Because if you name human, you end up with even more gnomes, because it doubles this triggered ability. On top of that, we also do have a lot of good humans in this deck, which the abilities can also be doubled from. And we have the very, very important Cavern of Souls. I, in testing this deck, had a lot of good results thanks to Cavern of Souls, because you know that uh, pesky little wash away that your opponent is always holding for your commander? Yeah, no, they can't use that if you've got a little bit of Cavern of Souls naming your commander's creature type. It's wonderful. Um. This deck is running a lot of really fun cards, though, uh, that help protect an Infacol and also double as attackers like Dauntless, Bodyguard, Giver of Runes, uh, Selfless Savior, or Skrell. These can be your attackers, but usually they're just going to help protect your commander while she gets bigger and bigger and gets more and more plus one, plus one counters. Uh, on top of that, I think that cards like Angel Fire Ignition or Swiftfoot Boots that can give haste to an Infacol get you a little bit more speed when you need to attack in on that same turn. You're gonna notice that like this curve is mostly one, two, and three drops. I actually feel like we could have more two drops in this deck, so you could perfectly curve into an attacker and a thing to attack, and it would be really great. But so far, this deck has been super fun to play because you have gnomes. Uh, I'll say the secret tech in this deck is actually also Rosie. I mentioned uh, Cathar's Crusade, but Rosie also, when you get those uh, tokens into play, makes an call bigger for her next attack, which is just mm, so spicy, so nice, so beautiful. So we're going to take an call into the queue and we're going to gnome our opponents. Amalia and a bunch of creatures I can't actually play on turn two, but a hope and a dream. I'm going to keep this, even though this comes in tapped and this currently will come into tap, come into play tap because we do not have the right mana for it. Oh, good. This gives me a turn to play the Banalish Knight Counselor. We're playing against what is probably going to be mostly life gain because life gain causes Amalia to explore lots of little things like pride mates as well that grow when you gain life uh, and the soul sisters to help you gain that life. Yeah, I'm just going to see some life linkers too, like this little dude. Here comes the Banalish Knight Counselor. I am a 2-1, and I will trade with you, Selfless Samurai, if I have no choice. I would consider this not really having a choice. We're going to trade, and Amalia is going to explore. And what does she find? She finds the Curse of Silence. Would you like to keep it on top or throw it in the trash? Please don't curse my commander. Thank you for not cursing my commander. I curse my commander enough. Uh, now we've got our choice of creatures here. Uh, Inti grows the fastest. This is the only, like, super evasive pair of creatures here, the Selfless Spirit and the Grateful Apparition. And since they don't have a fire right now, I'm going to start with the Grateful Apparition. The Grateful Dead. Wait, no. That's something else. That's definitely something else. Authority of the Councils means that my various hasty creatures are going to come into play tapped! Gosh darn it! I do have a lot of hasty creatures in this deck, and we are not going to be making much use out of them. Captivating Crossroads, I'm going to name White on this, and I'm going to try to get my commander to land and get beefed up by the Grateful Apparition. She is tapped. That's okay. They gain a life. They're going to gain a lot of life, by the way, because we are a token brewing deck. But these come in tap and attacking, so this doesn't stop them. Ooh, a hopeful initiate. 
That'll be good against my two big enchantments that I have here. I know that these are kind of like just trying to live the dream enchantments. What is the dream? I feel like is kind of livable with a commander like this. As I mentioned uh, when I was building this deck, these are cards I wish I could play in a Krenko deck. And the fact that I can play them here makes me really happy. So now uh, when they gain life, they'll be able to put plus one, plus one counters onto like the hopeful initiate or Amalia. She gets her own counters though. Uh, so we're going to have to make a choice of what do we want to do and in what order. I'm going to go just straight into combat or do I want to play Inti first to make uh, an Impical bigger? This means they will also be able to get a little bigger because they gain a life and they get a plus one, plus one counter. We swing in with all of these. I did these in the wrong order. That's fine. You know what? It would probably be good for us. More power, more gnomes. I feel like I want to drop one of these. Let's go for Rahilda. And reminder, if she gets to 20 power, she does wipe the board. Pew, 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 pew. Proliferate! And play yet another creature, so you gain another life. You get more triggers. And life is good. Hopefully, if a hopeful initiate, by the way, it takes um, three mana and two counters from among their various creatures to destroy an artifact or enchantment, which these would be the, I assume, big picks. Uh, they can gain a lot of life here, almost killing me using Heliod, but they might want to leave those back as blockers. Looks like they're just going to go in with Amalia? No, they're going in with both. It's just short of lethal, though. See, we're going to be making six or seven if we can get one of these down. So hopefully we, we do find a land here. Because I think Cathar's Crusade would be what wins us this game. That'll work. Okay, so we're going to name Human here. And what am I feeling? Am I feeling four, four angels? Or am I feeling loads of counters? I'm feeling counters. Let's freaking go. We are going to attack in with everybody. We are going to order this the correct way this time to put a plus one, plus one counter. Drop Divine Visitation. Oh, that's so beautiful. Every creature here gets plus seven, plus seven. And yeah, they're going to gain a little bit of life. But we're going to be dealing a lot more damage than they're going to be gaining life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If they put all those counters on Amalia, they might be able to wipe the board here, which is actually okay because we do have the selfless spirit. In fact, I think I'm just going to sacrifice this right now uh, because this is going to happen. If they want it to happen, it's going to happen. And I don't think that the difference of one of these attackers with the seven damage is going to make the big difference here. Listen to that beautiful sound. And that's gorgeous. A good game. Grosselox, Illithid Scholar. Grosselox is all about hitting your opponent's face, usually with teeny tiny evasive creatures. Because if they do hit your opponent's face, you end up drawing a card. But if they don't hit your opponent's face, you can actually choose when they're blocked to put them back into your hand if they have good, for example, enter the battlefield abilities. Uh, I am going to get myself started, though, with a flowering of the white tree. This just helps protect all my legends. Oh, look! Legends. <laughs> Loads of legends in here. 
And I'll also play a squee. And thank you so much, Charlie the Strike, for 38 month resub. Behold, a Gorblin! That's a 2 2, thanks to the flowering of the white tree. They may have the card advantage, but we have the fist advantage. They're also a mono blue deck, so like. There's a chance that they'll like have counter spells. And I just hope that they don't. Cavern of Souls, save me now! Oh, oops. So they played Mystic Sanctuary there. It came in tapped because they only have two other islands. So they couldn't play their commander this turn. That's too bad. Try and play my commander. See if it resolves. I feel like it won't. It resolved? Excellent! More attacking! Hi, Malcolm. Oh, look at that damage. Girl, look at that damage. Vanalish Knight Com Counselor can help us uh, keep swinging in. Lots of lots and lots of power here. I even got four lands, too. Mm-hmm. They swing in just with Malcolm. Malcolm also loots on hit and eventually starts casting spells for free. Malcolm's great. So they'll draw a card, then they'll draw a card and discard a card. Fairy Vandal's like, oh, dang, we're drawing cards. I'm going to get a little bigger. Dropped an island. I'm going to play Rosie because we are making some stuff here. Uh, we want an Impacal to get bigger. We are going to... I think just attack with everybody. Um... We want this to trigger first because we're making a token, which means that Impacal gets bigger, which means that this happens. And we can spread out the love. Big goblins. And Enemphacal does Enemphacal things. Like go fast and hit face. GG, Grazalox. Get Rog eats toes is playing Yogwas. Grand Physician. I feel like Yogmoth is going to be putting minus one, minus one counters that knock out my plus one, plus one counters and make my commander do a whole lot less. But we still have a pretty decent hand here because we're going to start with an Esper Sentinel. Yogmoth is a very scary mono black commander that can really get stuff going. Um, I, I feel like this is the sort of card that's worth fearing and can play with a lot of other abilities that can cause us some problems. We are not attacking in here because uh, the Grim Physician will cleanly take out our Esper Sentinel. Dire Fleet Hoarder, more delicious sacrificables. Death protection from humans is also not text I ever want to see. I am going to uh, sacrifice my Esper Sentinel here, though, so I can get the first trigger on Anim Pakal and get gnomed. They did not block, probably because they're trying to maintain more fodder for Yawgmoth. Next turn, we could go for either Mondrak, rude, uh, or Aurelia. They did pay the one. Mondrak now doesn't have anything, so we could, we could just go for Aurelia, try and get in a little bit more damage. If I had another land in hand, I think that Mondrak would be a safer pick here. Boop, boop. Plague Crafter. Probably going to sacrifice their Grim Physician. I will sacrifice this. They'll put the minus one, minus one onto the Esper Sentinel. But now I do have an angel who's flying high. Mondrak, we have another land. Four Enemy Call next turn. We swing in for four. Bam. I need my gnomes. I need them now. Gnow. I need them Gnow. Monkey. They have three mana. Nested Shambler. Doesn't look like they had a fourth land yet. I actually ended up adding more lands into this deck because at 40 lands, I was not hitting three lands consistently and it bummed me out so much. Ooh, they're going to eat Mondrak exiling him before I can double up any tokens. But listen, it's the, it's the right move. Bringing out an Impacal. 
doing it pre-combat. So she sees Aurelia attacks, makes an attacking gnome. And next turn, it's going to be gnome of their business because we're going to be playing with angels instead of wee tiny gnomes. Hi, Yogmoth. They have two sacrificables, but one of them can be sacrificed twice if they want to try and uh, take this out. We're going to play the Divine Visitation. Show them what we're working with. Buff up Aurelia. They did not do anything pre-combat. Okay, I don't really need to swing in with the gnome because they're going to be angels. We want the Mentor to happen before the Pakal trigger. And if you're wondering why didn't they do anything there, it's because they were dead. Uh, if they sacrificed the three creatures to kill Anim Pakal, Aurelia would have killed them anyway. Because she's a big freaking flyer. And why have one ones when you can have four fours? Live in the dream. <laughs> Good game, Yogmoth. Crucius, Titan of the Waves. Crucius discards cards from hands and then lets you seek out something that either costs more or less than a card you discarded. So we're going to say, hey, opponent, beautiful Crucius over here making treasures, discarding cards, maybe even reanimating them. Do you have turn one removal for my Ragavan? Oh, a dark ritual. Into Arcane Signet. Look at you and your fancy ramp. Into Iron Crack. Oh, nice ramp, dude. I want a ramp too. Give me your stuff. <laughs> Ragavan gets me a treasure. Oh, thank job. So let's get me a treasure every turn. Or a creature. I also just really like um, playing my opponent's cards. You all know this. You know all I, do, all I ever want to do in Magic the Gathering is steal my opponent's cards. Crucius is coming on down. If I didn't want to steal this, I would have just held up the Patriarch's Humiliation, which would have killed Crucius. They discarded a Feed the Swarm. You didn't want to destroy the bank job I stole from you? Oh, hey, Mural. Mural's pretty sweet. We've got a lot of choices here, actually, uh, for what we might want to do. I feel like the most mana efficient thing to do, though, is either play like Inipakal, Tajik, or Urabrask's Forge. I'm going to go with Pakal. I want to do the thing with our commander. Unfortunately, it means Meryl will go away, but... That means we get a treasure. If we don't cast the spell off Bank Job, we get a treasure. Treasure good. Treasure's humiliating. Killing Ragavan before I can attack? Oh, they're going to let me draw a card. Thank you! Hey, Crucius, I see you didn't find a land. No, wait. Oh, no, right. All that ramp was on turn one. They did find a land. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's really great. The Cavern of Souls. Go to attackers. Hey, wait a minute. You're not supposed to get to end step. There's supposed to be a second main during which I bonk your Crucius. It skipped right through their second main phase after they didn't declare an attacker. Arena's very weird with priority sometimes. Well, this time it's Thalia! Hi, Thalia. I'm going to go for Tajik. And I have to make sure I'm ordering this correctly, so I want to mentor first and then have an call. That way we get a plus one, plus one counter. Then we get another plus one, plus one counter. And we get two gnomes. I don't have anything I'm playing on two here. Two mana at instant speed, I should say. So I don't need to shock that in. You get end step treasures. I get end step treasures. We're really just the same deck, Crucius. Okay, they're attacking with Zorn. 
Would I like to draw a card this next turn? Maybe. Ooh, they're ambitious. You have so much mana. Oh my gosh, I wish I could play this Aurelia. Next turn, next turn. I'm going to welcome and swing, mentoring this gnome token and attacking with a whole bunch of little guys since these all come in attacking. Oh, nice, minus two. There's my mana. Boop, 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 boop. Notice that they put a Mizzix Mastery in the graveyard? That's pretty funky. Uh, let's use Loran, or do I want to get Aurelia out next turn? I think... I think the right move here is holding on to the extra treasures to try and make sure we get Aurelia. I guess we would have gotten a treasure anyway, because I'm not playing the, um... The card that they had there. Yeah, Cranko. You say Aurelia seems unnecessary with them at four. I don't think they're going to be at four this whole time. Ooh, Marionette Master is going to be dealing four damage per treasure sacrifice. Since they get an additional two at the end of their turn. Am I dead here? Because that's six times four. That's 24. And I'm at 22. I'm pretty sure they just won this game because Marionette Master in a treasurer's build can totally end the game. Nice. There's no kill like overkill. Beseeching the mirror. What are you, uh, what are you getting? I, I want to know what you're tutoring for here. Got something spicy? You beseeching something? Plenty of cards could kill me right now. Especially cast for free. Or just go to your end step. Shaldred? I mean, they don't need a Shaldred, but if they want to play a Shaldred or maybe a one ring, they can absolutely do it. I can't stop them. It needs to be good because they gave up their end step treasure. Oh, you're right. They did give up their end step treasure, but they also can still attack. I have one blocker. This gets them two treasures. There we go. Because this is a pirate. Yarhar, fiddle dee dee. I actually was thinking about building a Breach's historic brawl deck, but sadly, there's not enough mono red pirates, so we don't get there. Good game, Crucius! Ah, uh, Godric, a fellow aggro commander. This is a man who turns into a dragon man. Like a certain Trogdor does. Hi, Godric. Uh, Godric is a man who's at the ball, dancing around with the pretty lady Ash, who's for some reason disguised herself as a knight. I, I don't really know what's going on in Eldraine, but there's a lot of partying. Where there's parties, there's also hidden face. Uh, do I want to go for the Grateful Apparition or a Goblini? I'm going to go for the Apparition. Emberth Veteran. Just a great aggressive one drop. You could even put it in this deck. I feel like the young hero roll, unfortunately, just because there's already two toughness, becomes three on the first attack, wouldn't get too much value for an Impacal. They're partying because the king and queen are dead. Then why is there a bunch of dwarves having a food fight? Why is that a part of the set? What format is this? This is historic brawl. Hmm, the wily goblin. I'll bring out an Impacal. They have something on their one mana, but I don't know what it is. If it's removal, they might want to do it right now. Either taking out that Grateful Apparition or the an Impacal. Oh, wait, I know it's holding priority. This is holding priority because there's another creature. They could technically sacrifice this. This is 
like commander like it, it's commander that's 1v1 has less life total there's no commander damage and you don't need friends to play it this grateful apparition is going to help beef up anim pickle too Aw, gnome for a goblin. There's no home for a goblin. Boop boop. Next turn, we could use Boss Ket to beef up Enim Pakal even more. Or a goblin morale surgeant to just, you know, attack and make copies of this. Because it's fun. Here comes Godric. They still have a mana. Now they have two mana with the Mox Amber, and Godric is a dragon man. Don't, 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 don't. I don't have reach, but like, I could if you wanted me to. I could if I really believed. The reinforced Ronin. Being, it looks like channeled. I'm not blocking any of this because I just don't trust like that. Goes back into hand. Okay. Um, white. That comes in. And let's go for Rosie. Rosie makes a delicious snack. A delectable treat. Which we throw on Animpaco. Because we get a counter. Boop. And then when we swing in and we get a couple more tokens. Uh, I'm also going to throw a counter onto the Grateful Apparition. So I can start proliferating that as well. One on you, maybe two on you. Do I want two? Yeah, I'll throw two on the Grateful Apparition, just in case Adam Pakal gets removed. This way, this will also be a 4-4 four, four after combat, uh, assuming everything goes according to plan. Uh, and a 4-4 four, four is harder for them to kill. Okay, so they play with fire. <laughs> That's what they were going to do as a trick. So I'm very glad I didn't block last turn. Rosie's a beast. Love this card. Great with Sam. Great with Anim Pakal. Helps me gnome my opponent. Nice. Anduril. Not enough mana to equip it, though. And not enough to deal with my army of gnomes. GG, Godric. Azusa. Lost, but seeking. I am seeking three lands in my opening hand, which I do not have here. So I'm going to mulligan, and look at that! I got three this time! Love that for me. Azusa is all about playing extra lands during turns, and for some reason we've matched against Azusa three times since I've built this deck just a few hours ago. I don't know what's up with that. There's just something wild going on. They have turn one ramp, though, which is scary because it means a turn to Azusa, which means they're going to have, like, Five mana at the end of their turn. Our Banalish Knight Counselor is pretty cool, though, since we can use it to enlist and set up plus one plus one counters. Uh, we have another enlister here, the Goblin Morale Surgeon, that can also make copies of things. Uh, next turn, my plan will be to use this enlist. So next turn when I play NM Pakal, it will get an extra plus one plus one counter. Hmm. They had a tap land, so they couldn't get down their commander this turn. I am going to enlist this goblini. Swinging in for four. <laughs> Hi, Nissa. Nissa says landfall equals mana. Look at that. Mana. Wonder what they'll do with that two floating mana. 
Maybe use it to play another thing that gets them land. Well, they got an elf off of Nissa's ability. And the elf was Oracle of Moldaya. Let's you play even more additional lands and play lands off the top of the deck. It's time for Adam Pakal. Let's go! Mm, I think we're going to do the same in list. Since there isn't something I really want to make a copy of here. And Pakal gets a plus one, plus one counter. We swing in for four and two one ones get generated. You're going to eat one of those. Yum, yum, yum. We got Welcome and Vampire that can draw us a card. For Brass Forge, it just gets us more attacks. Ideally, we can get Aurelia out so we can have multiple combats. We can trigger Enem Pakal multiple times per turn. We can do some crime off the Robber of the Rich. And if they have nothing with more than three toughness out, since we get that boon, I am so down for crime. But, like, what else is new? Seriously, what else is new? You, you guys know me. You guys know me? Eh? Anyone? No? I'm, I'm sorry. Somebody said I'm a lot today. Yeah. And I'm having a really good time. Good game. <laughs> cheered. X420. Boo. Vasa, Deep Dwelling, a mono blue blink commander that's usually supplemented with a lot of counter spells. Like a lot, a lot of counter spells. All right, Thassa, you're going to be throwing my poor Enim Pakal back into hand over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I guess we'll find out. Uh, this is going to probably be a deck that um, interrupts our game plan, and I need to see how they're going to be interrupting our game plan. I would love to be able to go like Inti into Pakal here. No, we, we need to try and take a look at their hand so we can protect our game plan. All right, so they have doubling enter the battlefields, uh, returning spells to hand, uh, a bounce, a bounce, and a steal. Hmm. I'll hit the Aether Channeler here since I think that this will do the most to interrupt their game plan. And then I'll get down Urbrask's Forge because it is not a creature. And it's gonna get me a creature. Look at a fading hope it, okay. No longer do I have an attacker, but next turn I'll have another one, and then another one, and then another one! I'm shocking that in. Shocking, I know. For the Esper Sentinel into an Impacal. I don't think they have an instant or sorcery left in their hand, so they could bring out uh, the Saiba Siphoner. And just bring back either Fading Hope or Neutralize, but it doesn't... Actually, it looks like maybe they didn't. Maybe whatever this last spell is, it's an instant or sorcery. So this didn't get its discount. I said I can blink Fibbles up. Yep, yep. Fibbles, Fibbles. Double, double, thup, thup. All right, so even if I put all my stuff on here, they do still have a steal and a bounce, um, both of which are kind of a problem. So we're going to want to, like, spread the love here. <laughs> Try and spread out our damage and our troublemaking. Uh, I'm going to go for Welcoming Vampire so I can draw a card. And Inti. Nice. Um, I... Did play a land this turn, I think. Did not play a land this turn. Okay, so we're gonna swing in with all of these. Discard in the Daug. Bark, bark. I know it's better for me to do this, but because I think they're going to steal my commander, that's why I'm not doing it. There we go. Oh, I did play a land. I was hovering over them to see if one of them had the enter the battlefield this turn. I guess I just missed it. Shouldn't discard Inti. Aw, Evil Eye. 
Evil Queen! Thank you so much for gifting five subs to... <clears throat> Scott T. Duck Bear. Celador. Control Lord John and Bobby Christine. Oh, and what's this? You won your first ever drive. You got seven wins. Uh, do you pay the one? Hmm. I see. I see. Uh, I will protect. Congratulations, Evil Queen, and thank you for celebrating with us as we take out a mono blue deck. Nice. Good on all fronts. Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia. Gwenna is a green creature that taps for two mana, but only for other creatures. And when you cast something that costs five, or sorry, has a power of five or more, she untaps and gets a plus one, plus one counter. Bigger, beefier, badder, the green. I do love the good, good green stuff. Just look at her. I'm gonna try and get out Giver of Runes, an intrepid adversary. Oh, I'm sorry. Not everybody in my chat is an IT professional. But there's a lot of y'all. <laughs> you work behind the scenes on TV shows? Nice. I know there's at least one person who works on my... Uh, who watches my stream and works behind the scenes on racing TV. Like, does, like, some of the live interfaces for, like, Formula One kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like NASCAR, I think it's Formula, specifically Formula One. And another person works on news, also on TV. There's a bunch of people who are like technical TV side stuff, which is really neat. I'm glad I can be a voice in your ear while you're doing your work. Oh, look at you exiling a generous Ent. Gwenna! Hi, Gwenna! It's time! Right in for call. Hmm. Getting baked with that canyon. I'm going to swing in with the Intrepid Adversary to get that first trigger for Anim Pakal. I don't know why they held up the castle mana. Because they very specifically used uh, Scrap Gorger here. You line up the shot? Okay, so they were just holding for that. We're going to keep back or give her runes in case they bring out something that can fight like Kogla so we can protect Enem Pakal. Oh, Tyrannix Rex! Tyrannix Rex is toxic and has a big ward and trample and haste. They still have four creature mana up. Ooh, Kami of Whispered Hope, so this gets more mana on it. Since they've tapped out here, um, if they attack in, great. Uh, we're going to prevent some of this damage. But all of the toxic will still go through. Just preventing three of that eight damage if I can. I need tokens. And I need them now. Roaming Throne! We are going to name... Human! And I'm going to attack with both of these because really we're not very good at blocking here. Oh, Roaming Throne. I love you so much. Guys, put Roaming Throne in your decks. This card's so cool. I love it. Has Ward. Really good at doubling your commander stuff. I think the like the all star of like playing this with your commander is like mural decks too, since it gets you extra mural triggers of making more dragons and even making more roaming thrones if mural's already out. That's so much mana. 
What are you doing with nine mana? If they undo that tap and use a Garenbrig, it could be ten mana. You're putting it in your Tibbet deck so you can vote even more? I don't remember where it was, but I played a game of Commander where I stole somebody's Tibbet and used it. <laughs> I don't remember where where or when that was though. Your runes protect my creatures. X equals five on finale of devastation. I can't use Gwenna's mana for that. You were joking earlier earlier uh, on the stream about how it looks like the uh, monsters from Breath of the Wild. The guardians with the little do 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 Gaining life. That's probably a good idea. Rosie is not a human, so her uh her thing won't be doubled. But that's okay, because we're gonna mine to attack in and we're gonna make a real, real big Adam Pakal. A real real big. We can even make her unblockable since everything they have is green. GG. Niv Mizzet Parun! This Niv Mizzet goes infinite with the card Curiosity. And it's also just a really good card. You can play this deck as an is it control deck that is ideally countering and killing things using blue and red's special abilities as they build up to Niv Mizzet and many, many pinging damage combos. Well, I have a very good card against them. It's called Esper Sentinel. It says, hey, are you, yes, you, are you trying to do things like cast spells, non-creature spells? Good. Well, don't just pay the one, pay the two, because I'm going to use the Luminarch Aspirant to make the Sentinel bigger. Chonky. I see mana and a Fertel. I wonder what that's going to be. Could be a way to kill an Impacal. I'm still going to try to get a rat this turn. It's like if this is Demon Bolt, which I, I feel like it is Demon Bolt. I have to decide, do I want to put the counter onto Pakal or do I want to keep putting it onto the Esper Sentinel? Because I feel like right here, okay, so they did not Demon Bolt, if it is a Demon Bolt. Um, before this triggered. No, they're using an opt. So this might be a counter spell. This might be an extra turn. I don't think it would be a counter spell though, because they had the mana to cast a counter spell. Nice. And we got a giver of runes. <laughs> mana confluence in a two color deck. I feel like mana confluence in a two color deck is a bit of a crime. But Niv Mizzet does have kind of a wild mana cost, so it's less of a crime here. Yeah, I, I'm assuming this is Alrin's Epiphany. Faithless looting! Uh, do you pay the two? They did not pay the two. No, you don't have to pay mana confluence in Niv Mizzet. There's enough fixing. You don't have to do it. I believe in you. I will help you build your mana base so you don't have to put this in your two color decks. Please. It hurts me so bad when I see this. You always pay your taxes. What did they put in the graveyard? Essence, scatter, and exclude. Counter spells. Hmm. They have mostly tapped out, which gives me an opportunity to either do this or this. Um, when I attack in, I will be making four attackers. If all the t attackers have plus one, plus one, that should be lethal. So we're going to use Intrepid Adversary over Meryl. Put the plus one, plus one counter onto Pakal. We're going to swing in, get another plus one, plus one counter. Pew, 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 pew. Bam, 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 bam. Lethal damage. They didn't do anything. We just win. Nice. 
Gadwick the Wizened. What I? What's with all the mono blue today? I don't know. People like mono blue. Probably because counter spells are good. Hi, Gadwick. Gadwick the Ladwick. I am going to start with Minas Tirith since it comes in tapped. I'm going to go for Maria's Call into Flowering of the White Tree since it will both buff and protect. Oh, never mind. We got a nice land right here. Still Flowering of the White Tree. I think that this is a really good thing to get down. But it also might just get countered because it's a mono blue deck. This now comes in untapped. We can grab Adeline or Anipakal or go for Arcane Signet into Swiftfoot Boots to try and do everything at once. But I think it's best for me to try to land a threat. And here's my threat. It's Adeline. Midnight clock goes bing bong ding dong. This isn't going to land, is it? Do I want to try? Do I want to try? I want to try anyway. Mural Shield of Archive. Oh my god, it landed. I wonder if they have a wash away and it just... This was not cast from outside. All right, sweet. During my turn, my opponents can't cast spells or activate the abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Which means... No touchy. You? No touchy. They do have enough mana for like a river's review cure though. Oh, they're wild then. They stole the mural. They stole fizzy lifting mural. That's okay. I'm just trying to decide which of these I want to throw down here. I think I'll just go Arcane Signet into Pakal. I don't really cast things on their turn anyway. We'll swing in with Adeline and the 1 1 since we're going to get another couple 1 1s. More one ones. They did do crime. Gadwick for X equals three, leaving up one mana. Do -do -do. When I cast a blue spell, by the way, it will tap down one of my cards. Which can get silly nasty and nasty good. Come on, track. Nice. I'll protect Adeline. Swing in. Oh yeah, all the one ones are going in too. There's enough of them that I don't mind a couple of them going away. Thanks, Mondrak. We'll sacrifice whichever ones get blocked. Unless they don't block Adeline, in which case we want those all out because she's attacking for 12. And this kills them. Big Adeline. I think she was too far off to decide. They forgot she was even there. GG. Prosper, Tome Bound. There are so many cards that are good in Prosper. As long as they let you play a spell from Exile, and it doesn't matter if it's your Exile or your opponent's Exile, you get a treasure. And at your end step, you also get an Exile card at the top of your deck that you can conveniently play your cast during your next turn. Which is just great. Assuming you're doing Prosper things. Prosper is a really cool commander just because he sits around and he's a value engine. He can even be a part of, like, kind of storm things that are going on. Nice. Chupacabra. That's going to kill a thing. Hmm. I'm going to get down the soul cauldron. I'm going to tell Prosper to get lost. Do I have a two new token tripler from LCI in this deck? Yeah, I put in um, the token doubler and the token tripler. 
but only the ones that are creatures, because, you know, we gotta do the beat down. It's necessary to do the beat down. Bringing out Lelia, swinging in. Found a thing, won't be able to cast it this turn. By the way, Lelia, fantastic in Prosper. Reckless Impulse, they exile the top two cards that are deck. They got a Swamp, and they don't have any more red mana for this channeler. Lelia is exiled. So sad. Too bad. Bringing out an Impacol and Siege Veteran. Going to have Siege Veteran put a plus one plus one counter onto an Impacol. So when we hopefully attack next turn, we get more gnomes. Uh, and if they kill an Impacol before then, well, great. We get a thing. Oh, a Tali. Hey, do you want to see some tokens? Somebody was just asking if I had the token, uh, token tripler. And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. So there's nine of these. And there's going to be another three right here because a soldier died. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to bolt this in and play Skrelve. Go get them, little guys. I love you so much. I love you. And you, 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 Orcish Bowmasters. I don't draw cards. Do you know how to draw cards? Hey! Whoa! This chaos warped me. This is the nerf Bowmasters. That's why I didn't get to deal with damage on Enter the Battlefield. They stole Virtue of Loyalty, and they can cast either side of that. Uh, and they got Hamburgers over here. I... Take six. If I had mana open for the adversary, yeah, that would be cute. No thought sneezes. Well, I don't have cards in hand, so yeah, that's fair. Um, and in Pakal, again. More plus one, plus one counters, because they're good. I want all the one ones. All of them. I want I want everybody to make one ones. Let's go. One ones. One ones for everyone. It's probably lethal. I feel like there's a lot of little dudes. Nice. Tokens for the win. Good game, prosper. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars! As always, if you'd like to watch me recording these live and just play magic in general, come on over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where I play magic like every single day. I love Magic the Gathering, it's a super fun game, and I get to play a lot of different formats in Arena. Also, if you're looking for the decklist, it is in the description of the video! That's right, it's down there. It's like in plain text, there's also a link to like a paste bin for it. I've been trying to put those on all my videos. I also want to say thank you. Uh, I got a couple extra supporters on my Kofi account this uh, this past week. And I want to say thank you so much for helping support my channel so I can do what I do without just relying on advertisers. Five dollars from like a couple different people, that adds up and it makes a big difference. So thank you to everybody who has supported me. Also, thank you all so much for watching and have a brutal day.